Hello there, welcome. Today we're looking at how Kao can beat the new, very annoying way Kano plays into him, which is by pitch stacking, running a balance of justice, a lot of D reacts, and even Oasis respite. Kano's been performing quite well recently, and they have another trick up their sleeve to perform even better into Warriors, Guardians, and also Brutes. They don't go aggressive at all till their second cycle, but they remember the second cycle correctly and pitch stick in a way that within one turn they'll be able to threaten 100 damage easily and you'll just die whenever that point is reached. So as the opposing player, your the question you ask is basically can you kill him before he reaches that second cycle? And to achieve that with KO we are playing for very huge turns with two or actually at best three attacks. And every other turn, we're just trying to set up um, such an attack. Now, at the beginning of the game, there's only the balance of justice that might be a sign that your Kano is pitch stacking. But they don't have to be running that. And even then, they could just, you know, try to fool you and play an aggressive game plan nevertheless. But the second you'll see that first, you react, you know, you know what you're in for and you know what kind of game you will have to play. It is very important that you don't just send every hand straight away, because if there's only going to be, let's say, 9 damage, he can easily block that out with his hand and not leak enough damage for you to be able to kill him. On hands like these, where we don't actually have any go again, we just need to be smart and set something up in our arsenal that will be useful in a future turn. And we also need to get that no fear out of our hand. So the best thing to do here might be to just pitch into that claw so we can pitch away the no fear and the beast within. Put a clash of might which is a 2 for 6 brute attack um, into our arsenal and then we we'll also keep a blue card. The 2 for 6 um, brute cards are very important for our blood rush turns. They will enable us to play a 3 card white blood rush which is exactly what we need against this Kano. We're also not running um, skip skins because the usual loadout for Kano will be beaten trackers. They enable to you to go as aggressive as possible. Uh, unfortunately, skip skins would be better into the pitch stack Kano though, because they will enable you to play even more hands. You can basically just try every turn to get multiple action points and then send multiple cards whenever. Um, right here, because our hand isn't strong anyways, we'll pitch into that. AB to prevent more from the Aether Sprindle. If we let him um, opt for 5, that also means that one hand earlier he'll be able to reach his pitch, pitch stack. And the hand we have right now is also very good for setuping anyways. Can just throw some something here, maybe get his direct out of the arsenal. And then get agility for the next turn. You can't be scared of the damage he might put out on his or his own turn because um well first of all he isn't actually trying to kill you um before his pitch stack is reached and second of all if you're playing scared you're not playing aggressive enough and then you won't be able to kill him in time okay now we've done our setup we have a good card in our arsenal we have that agility token and we have a great hand um i'll just let him send this. Um, if we're playing perfect, we put in the beaten trackers with battle 1-1 one, one, one here, but that, that should be fine. Unfortunately for us, now on our big hand, he also has 5 cards, so he will block, be able to block out a bit more. Um, ideally, we are able to send the wild right here and don't discard it. Um, to achieve that, we should start with the Clash of Might. Um, or should be, maybe. Maybe I'm doing a mistake here um, in my calculations. Okay, no. The, the thing obviously is that if we want to send all three attacks, the Clash of Might, the Bear Fangs and the Wild Ride, we need to crack our Heart and Cross Trap right now, because we don't have six resources in hand. And sending that Bear Fangs first, we're being quite a bit greedy here, but if we get a another blue, we're actually able to send all of those without cracking the Heart and Cross Trap, and even if we discard that send packing for red, we're still able to send all three attacks with the Heart and Cross Trap. But we are very high rolly here. Draw a second blue. 
And now we have six resources to send three attacks that each cost two. And that's the might included a 21 damage turn for us. It's impossible to for Kano to block out even with eventually uh, or possibly six cards. We've also not seen a blood rush yet, which isn't well. It's good to see them early because they will draw you closer to the next one, but it also means we have way more power in our deck because blood rushes will always enable us at least a two wide turn with pretty huge attacks. Okay, now the Tillem from Limbus another way in creating huge turns. And with him playing another Aether Spindle here, I think I'm just gonna use it to set up again. I can keep the Wild Ride and the Tillem from Limb and pitch that blue Agile wind up and then play the yellow one. And then the question becomes whether we Arsenal Wild Ride or Tillem from Limb and I think if I want to play Talim from Limb, I should Arsenal it because it is a non 6 and should our hand um, come out in a way that we want to use a discard attack first, that Talim from Limb has to be pitched. So I rather put it in my Arsenal, it will be more flexible there. Now with three blues in hand, we have a, an ideal setup here um, if we don't discard that wild ride. To be completely honest, I should probably not be greedy and just play that wild ride first. But if we do hit um, a blue here and get a, another red attack, we can play that off the agility, follow up with the wild ride and a claw after that. So um, I think I should just... I should actually not greed for that because it's also not not working out. Because, but yeah, that would have been huge though. Still though, we can threaten um, at least what I think is 10, 11, 12 damage of this one and then also throw a claw. So still 15 damage, which should leak something. But that slight misplay there or slight greed could already cost us the game if we're being completely honest. Okay, another defensive card of Kano, though now there's nothing left in hand for him. So we might just be able to get 3 damage in and that would mean that we actually cleaned up half his life already. And now we've got a great setup hand again. We can throw one of those 2 for 6s, maybe get a direct out of him for the next turn. Then put the other 2 for 6 into the arsenal and use the wind up. I he really had a direct in Arsenal. And now we have another great hand. Unfortunately, no discard, so nothing to enable us to throw the claw in between. But we still threaten 13 damage. And there is a thought to be had here about breaking heart and cross strip throwing Assault and Battery um, and using the B-Chest ability on it to create an agility for the next turn. Um, but I I realized there are still three Blood Rushes in our, in our um, deck and we've seen a lot of our blues now so it might just be 
more relevant to keep that hardened crust trap around for later. Um, in a case of us being resource staff on, on a potentially big turn. Now, I, I, I forgot to keep count, but I believe Kano should be at like 16 cards out to his pitch stack. Uh, fortunately for us, we do draw our first blood rush here. And we do draw it with two more blues. So we might just be able to pull off a, a huge turn here. Unfortunately, discarding one blue, but maybe we're able to draw the one back. And we do get one. Now, we are missing go again on everything except our claw, but we have those beaten trackers. And when we're playing bear fangs and discarding a a six power, we can crack those beaten trackers and get an action point back. And therefore, we'll be able to actually come in with three attacks here, which is huge. Because also all of them will be buffed by, by the blood rush bellow. So really a perfect scenario right now. Unfortunately, they do still have that balance of justice. But we will get them quite low for sure. Okay, very nice. And now the hardened cross trip also comes in clutch. Um, in that it lets us keep the, the savage beast. So it's like not completely necessary, but it is a, a nice bonus. And now there's basically, that should basically be a guaranteed win. We can come in with Savage Feast into the Claw. And then if we are not too unlucky, we can play a runner runner after that. And nice, we draw that yellow. So now presenting another 16 damage and that should be game right here. Still maybe 8 cards out from his pitch stack. So it was really necessary for us to find those 2 more power turns here. To really push him over the edge. But we managed to do so and take this game home. And yeah, that, that's not how it always goes against those Kano games. It's definitely required to, to get some practice into those. And if you want to see more Kano, just, you know, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.